Yes, yes, people, welcome in. I thought I would try and start this little upload uh, just a tad different because I saw this tweet and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the leaked audio footage of Pep's halftime team talk versus Tottenham Hotspur. Hello, everyone. Welcome back into the channel, United Spurs of America. As you know, I'm Jacob. Chewy's here. He's sleeping. Whether we're live or on the upload, he's going to sleep. And I hope that you hit a like and subscribe to the channel. Share the channel. Help us get to that elusive 6K. Um, but big up to everyone. Look, we had a fantastic match yesterday. Yesterday. There's been a lot of discourse back and forth about X, Y, and Z in regards to it. Um, so I figured uh, I don't actually have that much time. So I figured I would do a uh, upload rather than try and go live. So hopefully I can keep my thoughts quick, succinct, and uh, be as le least distracted as possible. But I'll tell you a few things. I do have clips. I do have tweets. I have all type of things that I do want to talk about. But obviously, off the top of my head, I just want to talk about, first and foremost, shout out Ange Postacoglu. Shout out these players. Shout out this team. Because you know what? To go to the Etihad and put four past the four-time Premier League champions, to me, it's not an easy feat. And there's a thumbs up to remind you to hit a like. Um, but it's not an easy feat to do from any team's perspective. I believe in 52 matches at the Etihad, they have not lost, nor has anyone done what we done to them. Now, I like to joke around and say Ainge broke Pep, uh, or did Ainge break Pep? Uh, it was genuinely a joke when I first started it. And uh, it was because we, we obviously knocked them out of the cup. Then they proceeded to lose the next two, three matches. And I was like, mm, sounds like Ainge Postacoglu broke Pep Guardiola. It's obviously a joke. No ill respects meant to Pep Guardiola. Just honestly having fun with, uh, with, with Ainge Postacoglu and some banter. So uh, I posed the question. Some people got offended. I still stuck with it because, as you know, if you know me well enough, you know that I like to, uh, I like to say whatever I want and talk my truth. So... Remember, always speak your truth and stay true to yourself. Don't ever let anyone sway you from being who you are or feeling differently about the things you feel different about. Uh, because, look, um, whether whether Ange has wanted trouble to the heights of Pep Guardiola or not, obviously he has not. But when you go to his ground and you beat him 4-0, I'm going to boast about my manager. And if you don't like that, it doesn't really matter to me because uh, I love this team. And any time I can use anything to beat, you know, uh, to, to be happy about with my team, I will, because until we really win that trophy, what else do we have to pin our hopes on? Winning a trophy. But we didn't play for a trophy yesterday. So when I'm on a post-match show and, and I'm being told that, oh, you can't make fun of Erling Holland, uh, you know, even though I did find a video of Erling Holland with Ben Davies before Erling Holland actually played, uh, you know, in the Premier League, I believe before the, the Bundesliga as well. I have, a, I have a video I'll share with you um, in just a second. But it was like, you can't celebrate this because if because we lost to Ipswich or because we might lose to Fulham. You can't enjoy this. And I say fooey to that. I'm always going to enjoy wins, first and foremost. And of course, clean sheet wins. And then wins away from home, clean sheet, all that adding up is starting to stack up like pancakes. You know what I'm saying? I want a tall order of pancakes. And Ange Postacoglu is cooking it. He's serving it. And people are going to eat it, whether they want to or not, because he's going to make them. Whether you believe that he's making good pancakes cakes or not hey you won't know till you have a bite and uh, i feel like yesterday's one of those instances where he might be convincing some more people hey uh maybe i do take a bite but again it's the same thing that i've always said you've got to continually put good results on good results uh consistency is you know they say oh consistency is key and you know and there was a comment on yesterday's video consistency 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 something like that and it's like I understand the talking points, but I genuinely joked around, uh, you know, behind the scenes. If we go out there and we, A, either beat City or draw with City or, hell, even thrash them like we actually did do, I was like, I can't imagine what the narrative is going to be around why it wasn't good. And it's baffling to me. Again, people are going to feel however they want to feel about a result. But after a 4-0 win at the Etihad against the four-time champions, the four-time occurring still and still champions, 
Um, you know, they're saying City's having a horrible run, that they are forced to use awful players. If I'm not mistaken, we have a worse squad per these same people, and we also had more injuries. So if they're working with a shit squad, what were we working with? With a worse squad and then more injuries. So to me, it's just weird. There's never a time in which they could say, oh, Ainge did a good job. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, and it's, you know... <laughs> they're four points better than us, uh, even though, you know, we have Ainge. And it's like, yeah, they are four points better than us. So Arsenal are three points. Chelsea are three points. I don't actually have the table right in front of me. But to my understanding, um, it's like the narrative of of you can't really change what has happened. And what has happened is we've fallen behind in points. You can't change it. All you can do is work on the next one and try and build and, and, and improve. And I feel like that's what we're trying to do here. And, you know, we beat Villa 4-1. I was told Unai Emery was sexy, scary, scintillating, slick back hair. Uh, no one can touch him because he did yada yada in the Europa League. And that's all cool. That's all gravy. Uh, but it's just uh, I, I don't understand when, when Ainge does the impossible and i'm saying it he made history he did the impossible there's a lot of reasons why i put it in the thumbnail ainge made history and i'll tell you a few reasons off the top because pep guardiola has never lost five matches in a row because pep guardiola has uh, we were a part of two of those by the way so <laughs> a little caveat there he's never lost five in a row we started it and we just ended it potentially if they go and lose to liverpool in, a, in, in the next match you know, then then it may continue. But we were a part of history there. Two times, we were twice the opposition in a statistical fact, a historical fact that Pep has never lost five in a row since he's been a manager, and he did, in fact, uh, do that. Also, he signed a contract extension, two-year contract extension, if I'm not mistaken, and, you know, uh, leads, uh, leads a lot of people to believe that maybe we weren't going to go and get that result. There was actually a funny tweet that I'm going to try and pull up here uh, that, that shout out Cody Mack. Um, I did have it on my profile, I believe, because I quote tweeted it. So let me, let me, let me see if I can find that. Um, well, some of these are silly tweets. You already seen, you are, you already seen this. Yeah, you already seen this. Hey, but what do we do to city? But what do we do to City? Ah, run it back. What do we do to City? Hey, that's what we did to City. Come on, talk to me nicely. Um, where was it? Where was it? I don't know. It was... <sighs> Jeez. I don't know uh, how long ago it was. Maybe it was in my replies? Maybe it was in my replies. I should have done this before I did this on the upload, so I apologize uh, to everyone. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So Cody Mack, where was it? He made a tweet, and I thought it was great. I thought it was great. There it is. So Pep had the new contract bounce. City's getting their players back. De Bruyne came back. Uh, they start. Who else was on their bench? That uh, De Bruyne, Aki came back. Uh, I believe that was it. But then Ruben Diaz started training. So they had some players coming back from training, and it was like, okay, they're getting healthy. Uh, apparently Van Deveen's training, by the way, but uh, it doesn't matter. He wasn't on the bench either, much like Ruben Diaz. Uh, Spurs just lost to Ipswich at home. Both of our starting center backs are out. Ben Tancourt just got suspended. Vicario with the yips, which, you know, it could be debated. Yesterday, he ain't have not one yip. If I'm not mistaken, he had about five saves, and a, 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 about three of them were fantastic saves when I watched back the highlights. And I can't wait to watch back that full 90 minutes. Um, Ainge has been under pressure, and it's interesting that this part the angel has been under pressure because i saw vicario on his instagram he posted there's been a lot of noise recently something to that effect i'd have to pull it up to be completely honest to quote it uh word for word but he said something to the effect of um there's been a lot of noise lately and it's great to get back to winning yada yada let me see i'm gonna see if i can pull it up real real quick here we are so here's vicario's uh instagram page all right where was it? Was it this one? No. Well, he made his 50th appearance. And what a, what a 50th appearance to make. Um, was it this one? No. Was it this one? There it is. A lot. Can you all see that? You, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. 
A lot of noise recently, but this is why we do it. A lot of noise recently. Could be the noise around him being frail as a goalkeeper. Could be him uh, as a leader. Could be Ainge. Could be this team. Could be all the noise. Yada, yada. But Guglielmo Vicario, you got to give him some love because he helped keep that clean sheet, as did D&D. &D, and I ain't talking Dungeons and Dragons. I'm talking Dragoosin and Davies because they were absolutely fantastic. Oh, what's that? Oh, you want me to play the video? Did, you're talking about the video of that I found of Erling Holland and Davies from years ago? Sure, yeah, here you go. Run it up. I call you Daddy Davies when I see you play on the TV. Daddy Davies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that's that okay? Yeah. Sure. You like that? Eight, same Eight. Can I call you Daddy all the time? If you want. <laughs> <laughs> You see that? Erling Holland, fun video of Erling Holland back in the day asking, sir, may I call you daddy? And you know what? Uh, he obliged. He obliged. He put he, he putting on like a certain somebody at AC Milan with the captain's armband. They said, Mr. Reliable. And I love that personally because uh, for me, when the lineup came out, I'll be honest, I didn't feel good. I felt like this. Yeah, like that guy saying mustard. I saw Ben Davies in the year 2024 of our <laughs> of our beloved man. The year 2024, we're watching Ben Davies start for Tottenham Hotspur, and it's interesting because shout out Michael, the dude I started the channel with, the dude that we that that helped me fall in love with Tottenham Hotspur in the first place. Um, he he texted me that morning. And I'll, I'll read out the quote. It says, Ben Davies in the 11 in 2024. He said, I'm glad I'm not able to, I'm glad I'm not watching today to see his dumbass. I don't know if he was at work or what, or what he was doing with his day. But he was not watching. But I responded, Daddy Davies owns Holland. And then I responded, Fordill. I said, Davies owns that Norway fraud. Um, because again, I think we need to start putting a little bit more respect on Ben Davies. At least he's, when he's been called on in the limited factors, he's really maybe not been the father or the stepfather, but I would say this. He's not the stepfather. He's the father that stepped up. He has stepped up when we've asked him in Europa. He's, I remember a goal line clearance when we were uh, up against the shits against somebody we shouldn't have been up against the shits. Maybe it was Coventry. Uh, I pushed that one out my memory like a real dark, dark memory. But either way... Ben Davies may not be the dad, but he's definitely not the stepfather. He's just the father whom, whom stepped up. And uh, I thought it was fun because some of the players uh, were responding to this stuff online. And this guy says most chronically online squad in the league, which uh, sounds like he doesn't approve of how much he sees this stuff. But Madison got a hold of the Ben Davies photo, and uh, he played a little fun with it as well. Let's see if we can make that. Oh, nope, it doesn't even make it better for you to see it that way. Um he says, you are too quick. All joking aside, what a shift from uh, yesterday from Mr. Reliable. And then he tagged Ben Davies also online. Uh, Wilson Odebert posted a story in French, Juice de Mix Chili, which sounds like a really good Texan chili, I'll be honest. Uh, but says, just some chill dudes, which if you know, it is in the, it is in the, the thumbnail of this video because Ainge Postacoglu has his hands in his pockets. Um, and, and, you know, so does a chill guy. And apparently that's, that's a running theme here because Brennan Johnson posted destiny commented, said just a chill guy who likes scoring on Brennan Johnson's post. Also, I uh, found this a little bit interesting. Someone uh, tweeted about Pedro Poro not celebrating because he had one training session with city. And then Pedro Poro responded to it with a photo of him celebrating. Um, and, and it was a laughing emoji like, okay. Are you sure about that? Um, but anyway, I thought that that was quite funny. And also, there was something else I saw, and I want to apologize. If you did, if you're still watching the video thus far, and you happen to watch the watch along or the thing that I posted afterwards of the end of the watch along, I was losing my head. I was losing my cool. If you don't know, if you were there, you probably heard the entirety of the match, me losing my cool. So I found a video, and I was like, no, I'm not going to play this clip. But However, I think I do need to play the clip because I feel like it was me and the cat in the video is you. And I just kept singing this song to you, trying to translate my heart and maybe not translating it in the best of ways. So to help mend the apology and your acceptance of said apology, uh, maybe you and the cat, you know, you just got something in common because uh, abrasively singing in your face is not the answer. 
Miau, 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 Yep, so I'm sorry about that. It was very abrasive. And that poor cat, he looked a little afraid. Um, but apparently this guy, that's like his account, he like translates songs for his cat. So uh, shout out PETA. If y'all need to get intervened, I don't know who that is. I just saw that clip on Twitter, so don't get mad at me. Um, but I also did see this on Twitter. Tottenham tweeting this out, and I don't even think it does it justice. Talking about uh, Kulisevsky's match stats, ball recoveries four, seven duels one with one assist. I don't even think that that fully epitomizes the amount of contribution that this man had yesterday and he has had throughout the entirety of the season. I've been saying that I feel like Kulisevsky has been by far our most consistent player if there was any player that i would argue uh deserves a or at least a shout in the team of the season it was kulisevsky it was always going to be kulisevsky uh because he's been the only really consistent performer however his two worst matches were in two of our worst matches that we've played as a team in crystal palace and in ipswich and you could arguably say as well the second half versus brighton but again i maintain yesterday this guy was fucking phenomenal like I think it's the best game I've ever seen from Kulusevsky. What he had to say on the on the match was, this is the standard. This is how we have to play every game. If not, we are just stupid. We just have to keep this level because when we play like this, it's a joy for the world. And it is Christmas time, and one of the Christmas songs is Joy to the World. And Kulusevsky doing his best, um, you know, doing his best Santa Claus impression, not a clown. I am not a clown. All right, he's not a clown. He is Santa Claus. He's bringing gift. He's bringing joy to the world, and it definitely brought joy to us. And and I, I think every Spurs fan, whether you fucking hate me or not, or disagree with everything I say, and you still love me, you would also agree with this is the standard. This is the best that we've seen Tottenham play. But again, this was also what I was told after Aston Villa that this is the best best win I've ever seen under Ange Postecoglou, and. Uh, now, again, this is the best win that they've ever seen under Ange Postacoglu. So it's got to continue. Number one, they, like, like, full stop, send the letter. It has to continue. I agree 100%. And I've never once, even in my defense of Ainge, defense of these players, defense of anything or, or anything I've been critical of, I've always left the room for, for the ability for me to be wrong, the ability for me to understand that, that that maybe I need to open my mind a little bit differently to something. And I think Kulusevsky is an epitome of that. For me as a player, uh, he, I didn't know what position he was best at. Then there was a moment where I felt like I've seen him play bad in, in a Tottenham shirt longer than I've seen him play good. So I started to sway. And then this year it was like, well, let's see. In the preseason, we flirted with him as a false nine. He plays a false nine for, for Sweden, and he's very productive with Guido and, uh, and Isaac. But we never really knew where we wanted to put him. And for me, it seems like even on the wing, now it can work. Whereas before, when we moved him centrally, I was like, this is where he it works. Don't move him back out to the wing. Ainge Postacoglu did the, the A word that no one wants to hear, adapt, and, uh, you know, tried Kulisevsky in a different position. And yeah, I think it was fantastic. But I like this. We are just stupid. And it's a great quote, and it's the L. So hold up the Ls. If anyone been talking ill to you, hold up the L to them. If anyone been talking ill to Ainge, hold up the L to them. Put your hands in your pockets or hold up the L. That, that is the motto that we're going with today. Um, just, oh, that's just some fun banter stuff. Look, Tim Sherwood, he was speaking on, on Ainge Postacoglu. He said there's probably a 50-50 split on Tottenham fans on who either want him on uh, or amazingly want him out. It's incredible. I can't believe it. Shame on you guys for wanting this guy out. So that's Tim Sherwood who said, shame on you if you want him out. That's not me. That's Tim Sherwood. Um, look at that. Manchester City can hold that L as well. Uh, this is a Spurs picture that goes hard. It's at the Etihad. 4-0 to the Tottenham Hotspur. What a beautiful, beautiful sight that is. Um, obviously, Daddy Davies, I can unbookmark that because I saved it. Um, I also want to kind of end off with Ainge Postacoglu as well. I can praise the players all day, but I'm trying to keep this video short, sweet, and succinct. Um, but I went off with a few things because I feel like I started the video asking what is the narrative going to be? What will they say about Ainge. What will they say about Tottenham when we win versus City? 
Well, we're finding out now. And one of the things that I'm hearing is when we didn't play Ainge Ball, we're now looking this and yada yada. And I just don't buy into that. I feel like that's a very narrow-minded view of Ainge Ball. So the, I want to end the video with this thought, and it's going to be in the title as well. And please comment down below. You agree, disagree, anything. Let's please have a healthy discussion because I go into live chat rooms, and I, I'm really just disappointed I, I can't even just talk shit i can't even just get in there and, and enjoy myself without six different accounts all going at me going at things i say or didn't say and and it's really annoying and i just want to enjoy a show so apologies to any content creator out there like sava like marlin or ashmatic i go to y'all's chats and you're fucking you, you got these guys that are just waiting for people like me to get on there and chat and i get it you're eager beaver you want to take a bite of the hamburger whenever it comes out to the table i understand my friend but hold on and just chill out like come talk to me on my channel talk your shit here so please comment below uh, i'm gonna try and do more fan call-ins or not fan call-ins fucking you hate me call-ins whatever i'm trying to be more open with the dialogue because i feel like you know i go into chats and i just get berated with fucking hate and and negative bullshit that it's like bro we both want to win we won four nil and y'all are still bitching at me you're still upset with me and you're still upset with the notion of ange ball it wasn't ange ball why we won it was this and that why we won and i'm just gonna say it's okay that, to believe that it wasn't ange ball why we won i'm not telling you how to be don't tell me how to be yeah, I'm feeling beautiful. You should feel beautiful too as a Tottenham Hotspur fan when you win 4-0 away at the Etihad. And, you know, I hear other people talk about how when we win, they get nothing but the opposite. They get people, ha-ha, egg on your face, LOL at you. And, like, I feel like those people do it because these people do it, and these people do it because those people do it. And where we're getting ourselves into is this fat bastard cycle. Now, fat bastard is a character from Austin Powers, and there was a line that he said in there when I was a kid, and it really stuck with me, and it goes as such, quote, I eat because I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because I eat. And it's an endless cyclical cycle where it's uh, it's like a self-fulfilling uh detriment to yourself because you're going to do this thing and it's going to come back in this form that makes you do this thing that makes it come back in this form and that's what we're doing in these chat rooms and it's weird we won four nil let's fucking enjoy it all right so if we disagree on whether it was Ainge ball or not that's another story and another topic and that is where the fun and the football discussion should be had because i don't think it's all a one up you're right you're wrong like there was perchy he commented on one of my videos big up perchy's back in youtube and and he said that he didn't feel like it was fair what I was doing, calling out fans. And fair or not, I don't think it was unfair, but fair or not, uh, it's done. And it's what happens. And at full time, when my fucking heat is running real high, I'm yelling, I'm screaming, hands in pockets. It was dumb. I watch it back and it feels very uh, embarrassing and cringy to watch. But in the moment, that's how I feel about it. So I'm not going to try and change who I am just because maybe it's not fair to someone or not. Because honestly, I get it back in return a lot. I had a whole paragraph typed out to reply to Perchy. But I just said, you know what? I, I can answer it with my actions and my later words. Because my words about it are just as such. I'm going to defend myself, my opinions, and I'm going to banter, mock, and be satirical about others' opinions. It's just who I am. People don't like it. People do like it. Maybe that's why when I go into chats, people want to hate on me. But anyway, f this isn't about me. I'm not trying to fucking talk about me. So stop trying to hate on me is my end, of, end story. Let's just love Spurs when we win, and then we can talk about whether or not it was Ainge Ball, whether, why we won or not. I do believe it was Ainge Ball why we won. Those first two goals, the high press, the, the physical physicality those first 10 minutes of the match we were getting overrun it was all city they kept bang 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 trying knocking knocking at the door fucking it up knocking at the door fucking it up eventually we had one chance on the other end and then we kept bang bang banging and you know what it was just a persistence uh i feel like of our method methodology of ange ball that high press, we forced errors from the best left back in the league, Josko Vardial. If you're just listening, I did air quotes. Best left back in the league, Josko Vardial, which he's a fantastic defender. However, the press got into his head. We rattled him. We rattled their players. And I ain't hearing this. It was their B team. Or it was Pep didn't care. All the same excuses they gave us the first time we beat Pep in this 5L loss streak that Pep is holding. So I'm not buying that notion personally. 
I'm not buying the notion that Ainge fell out with the locker room. That was international break bullshit. I called it out. People didn't want to hear it, but they lied. And whether you believe me or not, it's proof is in the pudding. Look at this photo. Look at full time birthday boy with the brace. Um, you know, whether or not you believe this is, you know, I, I've heard, well, this is the first time that Madison's really been allowed to play that 10 and, and really be open and free in that role. Like, Sure, that's great discussion to have maybe going forward. But for the win, to say that that's not Ainge ball because Madison somehow played differently or our back line held it, to, uh, they, they inverted and pushed up less, which is what I believe why it looked as though we had more of a back four, which I do admit we didn't have a isolated back two at times like we do see with Romero and Vandeveen. There was an adaptation, but Ainge doesn't do it. But then when he does do it, oh, he doesn't do it enough or he's not going to do it again or he's not. There's always a notion. There's always a stick to beat Ainge with. And that's fine that's your right as a fan to have an opinion just like mine and if you disagree with it fuck it bro who cares we both want to win and we won four nil ainge ball won four nil so that's also going to be in the title and if people don't like it they're not going to like it but look i'm here to tell you right now i love this club i believe we're headed in the right direction i've never wavered in my belief with ainge pasta Coglu. i've held him accountable for the problems in which i believe he's brought onto himself like starting and playing timo verner not buying timo verner let me clarify starting and playing timo verner is his fault but again timo verner brendan johnson combined for an ainge ball goal so part of our four nil win is ainge ball whether you want to believe it or not that is besides the point so again we can agree, disagree on that. That's fine. That's fun. Please comment down below. Let's have that discussion. Call in on the next call and let's have that discussion. But in the hopes of keeping this video shorter, it's already over 25 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there with the thought of this. I've been saying now for a few weeks in my, in my ending of a video that be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and fucking enjoy a, a Tottenham win. Enjoy it. Smile. Laugh. Not find reasons to say why Ainge didn't win it. Oh, this is why City lost it. They didn't care. Unai didn't care. They're tired. They're dealing with injuries. We're dealing with all the same bullshit. I ain't hearing none of that. So celebrate the wins. Enjoy the wins. And any wet blanket that's trying to rain on your parade, tell them, I don't give a fuck. Because you know what Ainge Postacoglu said when he goes up to the Manchester as a city? Zero goals conceded in this suicidal, oh, suicide kamikaze ball. Zero goals goals conceded in Manchester seven goals scored we own Manchester it is Ainge Chester now whether you like it or not Ainge Ball Chester whatever you want to call it we own that city we run that bitch talk nicely to me talk nicely to Ainge Postacoglu if you ain't talking like this to either one of us then I don't want to hear you talking at all how about that <laughs> I'm just kidding do whatever you want but hit a like hit a subscribe and as always folks come on you Spurs be kind to yourself be kind to others Come on, you Spurs. Just let me eat you one time. Just let me eat you one time. And you're gonna, I guarantee you, you're gonna, you're gonna ask me to stay to your house. You're gonna sleep for three days, my baby. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna make you cry. Are you gonna show us?